What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, coach of your Montreal Mylotic, bringing you our Week 10 battle for the BBL. Today is the final regular season game of the season, and we have not locked in our playoff spot yet. Basically, the we're currently sitting in 8th right now, and Sparks, who is our opponent, is sitting in 9th. We are 5-4 and four plus 2 or plus 3, I think it is. Uh, no, we're plus... I think we're plus 2, and he's minus one yeah i think that's what it is so there's a differential of three between us and basically what that means is we make the playoffs if two things happen well if if one of these two things happen the first is we win the game make the playoffs second thing that could happen that would lock in our playoff spot is if we lose by a differential of one oh or less so there could potentially be a zero zero game but i doubt that happening anyways um this is very important because we have never missed out on playoffs of the team we've drafted and i'm I kind of hoping to keep that streak alive, but at the same time, I wouldn't be too upset because the teams that we've lost to, we lost to the teams with the four best records in the league right now, and we've lost, and we'd be losing to uh, to, to Sparks here, and Sparks has a really crazy team with a lot of uh, hacks, gods on it, he's got Shaman Sky, Jirachi, and Togekiss, so I'm, I'm hoping not to get triggered this game, but um, he's got a really cool team, it's, it's really interesting, I believe he's running on a five game win streak right now, and he has a chance to make playoffs, and if you guys remember last season, we actually played Sparks in the season finale as well and that was also a game to see who would make playoffs out of the two of us and uh, we ended up 6 0 him with our mega alteria that actually didn't have any happiness accidentally so uh yeah but it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting but anyways I'm, I'm recording this game kind of like at night so i want to be a little bit quieter so i'm sorry if i can't be as animated but i'm still gonna try and give you guys the best possible commentary that i can but um i just want to mention as well if you guys haven't already make sure to go in the description and check out the link to my discord server the ocean we're gonna be trying out something really cool a really like amazing um I guess, way to interact and engage with the people there. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be something really cool that I can't really mention right now because it's not completed yet, but uh, hopefully by the time my exams end, we'll be able to get started on that right away. So, uh, yeah, just if you guys haven't already, make sure to go and check out the uh, the Ocean League, sorry, the Ocean Discord server. And uh, one more thing as well, there's not going to be a game up next week. I don't think there will be at least because we t we're taking a, um, a one-week break between the end of the regular season and the beginning of the playoffs just to kind of reset and make sure that all games that had to be done uh extended got done so we actually played this game during that extended week that you guys are seeing now you guys like that by the time you guys are seeing that the playoff week will have started for those teams that made the playoffs so yeah but anyways let's get into the matchup so my opponent has a team of mega blaziken shaman sky jirachi togekiss high dragon kofagrigus toxpex swamp for wazimus pachirisu wazimus the mascot pick and avalug well we have a team of dialga protean grand wazimus mew infernape tangrowth Slurpuff, Volbeat, Wazimus, Donphan, Wazimus, Jinx, Pikachu, and Mega Aerodactyl. This is um, going to be kind of cool. Uh, it's going to be a very fun fun game. Um, obviously, he has a lot of hacks mods, so I'm kind of worried about that. Worried about that, for sure. But um, our Greninja kind of goes in. Greninja is really, really good here, and it actually is... like It's beyond good. Basically, once the Shaman Sky is gone, Greninja just puts in so much work. So I am running Greninja with speed for Jirachi here and Blaziken at neutral, so it's got speed for base 100s. We hit everything super effectively except for Avalug and Pachirisu. Um, I really want to have Water Shuriken on this set because it's a guaranteed 2 KO on Chicken and it's a guaranteed Oko if we hit five times, so it's big because we're running Expert Belt. Um, and then, uh, but I do I, I have Grass on instead, and that was just so I can hit the Swamper because it Okos Max Bidef Mega Swamper and it Okos Max Fizdef Rindo. Very Swampert. So we are an Expert Belt set with Ice Beam, Dark Pulse, Extra Sensory, and Grass Knot. Again, really wanted Water uh, water Shuriken, but just wasn't in the cards. We then have Goodyear, our Dawn fan, who is making its second appearance. I mean, we brought the past two weeks after not bringing it once at all this season because of, uh, well, we picked it up midway through. But Dawn fan always 2 kills Shaman, Creeping, sorry, sh always 2 kills Shaman, Creeping, Greninja with, um, with the rest of its EVs and its HP with Ice Shard after Leftovers. So just in case he's Leftover Shaman, just in case he's uh, got a decent amount of bulk there, we can always guarantee the, Oko, the 2 kill with um, with Ice Shard, and because it's priority, we won't be flinched by Air Slash, and we won't be Oko'd by Sea Flare because of the Sturdy. Um, we are we also always 2 kill Max Defense Swampert with Seed Bomb, and we're never 2 kill by Adamant Mega Blaze against Flare Blitz, which is very, very important. And um, yeah, so we're basically, we got Ice Shard, Earthquake, Stealth Rocks, and Seed Bomb, and uh, you're going to see kind of a mistake with the set. I shouldn't have had Stealth Rock. I should have had Rapid Spin on the set because I have Stealth Rock on another Pokemon, and that is my Infernape here. We have Calgary, the Focus Sash Infernape with Stealth Rock, Close Combat, Flamethrower, and Taunt. This is my lead set. We have enough 
speed for Jirachi, our attack said we always 2 KO a 20 HP EV Hydreigon with close combat. Um, the reason I have 20 HP EVs there is because he needs to have enough, like that's, that's, that's what would be left over if he was speed creeping, I believe it was my Dialga maybe, or no, my Jinx, that's, it, he has to have that much to, to speed creep my Jinx. Um, but yeah, the rest that we have is in special attack, and uh, I have Tom because I don't want Toxic Spikes going up from uh, the, I believe it was the, the, the Toxapex, yeah, the Toxapex or the uh, the Cover Gears, I guess, have Toxic Spikes as well. Then we have our Mew. I'm bringing an offensive Mew this week. Um, we have our Mew here, which is never 3 killed by Jirachi's Iron Head with Leftovers, and I'm realizing now I don't have Leftovers, I'm not running that. Um, we then have also Speed for Hydreigon as there's a plane going outside my house. We have the Cobra Berry this week instead of Leftovers, so I don't know why I still had that in my notes, but we have Calm Mind, Psychic, Roost, and Aura Sphere. I really want to have a Calm Mind set this week. It did really good against the team, especially if he wasn't running a Scarf Hydreigon and if we didn't get flinched by the uh, Shaman Sky, and it'd be really good against everything else. Psychic is an amazing type against this team outside of the uh, the Jirachi and the Hydreigon. Everything else kind of like doesn't is like, is like doesn't appreciate that. So I have, um, I have Aura Sphere there because it hits the Hydreigon for super effective damage, and it's... Um, neutral to the Jirachi. I didn't really think of anything that could hit both super effectively or both neutrally, um, and besides if hitting both neutrally wouldn't be like as valuable as hitting one super effectively, so that's why I went with Aura Sphere there. And uh, yeah, we then have our Dialga here, which is Choppleberry. We have Earth Power, Ice Beam, Flash Cannon, and Substitute. We're running a really cool spread this week. I, I don't, like, it's, it's really interesting, but we, our speed is here for base 80s, which is obviously really cool, just in case he wants to not Mega Evolve his Blaziken like Aaron did in our mock. Um, We'll outspeed that. We're also never O code by Adamant Mega Blaze against High Jump Kick after we take um, damage from a substitute. So let's say we get up our sub and then our sub gets broken. We are always one point out of range of a High Jump Kick from a Mega Blaze again. Obviously, if there's Stealth Rocks up, we're probably going to go down, but if he's low kick, then we actually live that all the time. And Aaron was low kick. He seemed pretty confident that he was going to bring low kick as well. So I'm uh, kind of hoping that we actually live that hit. And uh, yeah, we have access to, I think I already mentioned the moves, but Earth Power, Ice Beam, Flash Cannon, and Sub. And the rest of our uh, investment was put into special attack. So it's basically 140 HP, 4 defense, 180 special attack, 4 special defense, and 180 speed. Our next and final mod is going to be Squad Goals, the Volbeat. Prankster, we have a relaxed nature. I didn't really put too much effort into the, the EV spread for this. I don't really do that too much with the Volbeat because it's just kind of there to not really take too many hits. It's just there to kind of be there and be an annoyance. But we have Encore, Thunder Wave, U-Turn, and Roost. We're a, we're a physically defensive spread. And um, it's really useful this game because it can allow me to paralyze the Blaziken and the Shaman, which are really, really scary because obviously they're really fast and they can both sweep through my entire team if things go wrong. Um, and I have Encore there just in case they decide to go for Substitute, the turn up switching in Volbeat. So that's kind of important for me to uh, to, to do. If they, if they go for a sub and I have and I have Encore, I can do that. But I really want to have Defog on this set because I didn't want to have uh, the potential for Toxic Spice to get up or Stealth Rocks. They'd be all really annoying. So because of that, I, I want to run Defog, but uh, I end up going with Encore and Thunder Wave instead just to be uh, safe. But anyways, that's our team. It's been uh, long enough. Jesus, that's a long team preview. I'm sorry, eight minutes long. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So looking at the the matchup, I was thinking, like, I'm a lead with my Infernape. It's my guaranteed lead. Um, I didn't expect Patricio to come, but everything else I pretty much expected. Um, maybe not the Cuffer Grigas too, but yeah. So Cuffer Grigas and Patricio were kind of like, meh. I expected Swampert or Toxapex, but uh, I'm going to lead with my Infernape here. He gets up rocks against everything on his team, which is very, very nice. Unfortunately, he does lead off with his Shaman Sky. So now I have to pretty much hope that I can not get flinched by Air Slash. If we don't, if we do, then it's pretty much uh, going to be the end of the world. But hopefully we can manage to not get flinched. We are going to live on our Focus Sash, of course, we are Sashed. And hopefully we can get up our, our, uh, our Flamethrower here. And we do manage to get the Flamethrower. And the reason why the Flamethrower is because it's going to be a guaranteed KO on this Shaman. Um, and thankfully, just thank God, we didn't get flinched. Because had we gotten flinched, it changes the way this game is run unless he misses Air Slash. But uh, he ended up being a Scarf, a Shaman's guy, he told me after the game. And the way he brings this in um, makes me think he's definitely Scarf. So I'm thinking, I'm just gonna switch out, I'm gonna go into my Volbeat, and I'm gonna take this Dark Pulse or this U-Turn or whatever he's gonna go for, and then I'm going to be able to roost off my damn, roost off the health, roost off the health, and then U-Turn out into something else. But unfortunately for me, he does crit me here, and had he not crit me, we would've actually not been too KO'd, so I could've U-Turned out freely, and that would've been my play here. Um, unfortunately, uh, we did get crit, so I have to go for the Roost, and that allowed him to bring in his Jirachi for free. And this Jirachi is kind of a pain uh, to deal with. I don't know what spread he's going to be. Jirachi is one of the Pokemon I hate the most in all of Draft League. And um, because of that, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to switch out right away, because he is going to outspeed me here. I'm going to go hard into my Infernape, predicting the Stealth Rocks. Um, the reason I, I predicted that is because I felt like 
he needs to get up rocks to kind of deal with a lot of things. I can deal with the sturdy on my Dawn fan, deal with my infernate right there. I really chip down the rest of my mons as really, really valuable as well. So he ends up going for the stealth rocks. Thankfully, we get that prediction right. And this allows me to get up free rocks myself. I was waiting going for the flamethrower first and then going for rocks. But I just thought, you know what? He's, he's not going to go for a wish. He's just going to attack me. So I'm going to go for the stealth rock here and be able to... Uh, Make sure that I have hazards up for pretty much the rest of the game since I don't think anything else on his team. Actually, no, Pi Dragon gets Defog, but I don't think he's going to be running it on a Scarf set this week. Anyways, we do drop to the Psychic, which is unfortunate, but Infinite put in more work than I already expected, KOing the Shaman Sky and make sure we have rocks up for pretty much the rest of the game. And I can go freely into my Mew here based on him being a special Jirachi. So because he's a special Jirachi, I don't think he's going to have Iron Head. Um, I also don't think he's going to be getting Spit F drops from Flash Cannon or Psychic because he's probably not going to go for those uh, if anything he switches out or goes for a Toxic or a Thunder Wave and if he goes for a Thunder Wave then he gets paralyzed himself so I'm going to go for a free Calm Mind here as uh, he's actually going to stay in which I didn't expect too much I, I thought he was mostly going to switch out unless he had the Toxic so I'm expecting the Toxic to come out but I'm thinking you know what it's fine we're going to be outspeeding everything on his team outside of the High Dragon we have the Culver Berry for that we're great but he goes for the Moonblast instead that's a big play because Moonblast means that I can just set up all over this thing so I'm going to set up another Calm Mind, as he's going to switch out and he's going to go hard into Pico, which is the mascot pick, the Pachirisu. Um, I did not expect this thing to come out, but apparently this thing dies to a plus two um, Psychic from this range, which is excellent. So I was going to go for that, expecting to be an offensive uh, Pachirisu. I click Psychic here, and this thing should drop, and you should pretty much be on its way to sweeping this game right here. So I go for the Psychic, and we do have Roost, so we can just recover back any HP we need to, but unfortunately he is an Assault Vest um, Pachirisu, and he goes for Nuzzle, which is going to paralyze us. So, Sparks told me after the game that this was his uh, answer for the Greninja. So, obviously, especially defensive Greninja, sorry, especially uh, offensive Greninja does a ton of work to his team, and this is his answer to it. You know what? More power to you. It, it, I mean, it, it stopped the new sweep for him, which is really big. I go for another Psychic here. It's not going to pick up the KO, but uh, that's okay with me because I can now roost up for free and make sure I can always live the High Dragon's, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Dark Pulse after the Aura Sphere. So the only thing, oh, sorry, no, 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 after the Cobra Berry, that's what I want to say. But I have to go for the Roost here, and I have to break out of Paralysis. So do I break out of Paralysis? That's the big question here. He takes damage from rocks, and we are going to be able to, thankfully, not get paralyzed, bring ourselves back to a ton of HP, and the Heat now has to go for the Dark Pulse here, and we have two chances, it looks like, to break out. So I'm going to go for the uh, Aura Sphere here. It will Oko him, he pops our Cobra Berry, and this is going to do nothing. I believe, what are we at? We're at 118, it brings us down to 81. That does nothing. Like, I will take that's 37 points of damage. But, unfortunately, we get paralyzed. Now, we do have one more chance. I mentioned before, we have two chances. I checked the calcs. I believe the most he could have done was like 78 points or 80 points of health, I think, it's, I think it was. So we guarantee he'd always live this hit if he was timid. If he's modest, then we probably go down. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that we actually live this hit. Um, if we do, then we actually get this hit off. Because... Make sure that this Pokemon drops is really important. So he goes for the Dark Pulse. Do we get flinched? Do we get paralyzed? What's going to happen? We live on 9 and we get our Aura Sphere off, which is huge. And down will go the Hydragon. So that's massive that we got the KO on this thing. And at this point, all he has left is the Pachirisu, which dies to rocks. And he's got the Cofagrigus and the Blaziken. Blaziken obviously going to be a pain about to deal with. But if we get two more KOs, we clinch playoffs. That's what matters right now. We've got to clinch playoffs. At this point, I'm playing to clinch playoffs, not to... Uh, win the game and uh I, I think that might have been a bit of a misplay on my part the way i was playing but i felt like i need to stay in here just in case he went for the substitute um yeah i mean i, I just want to clinch playoffs here if we clinch at five and five it doesn't matter to me i just want to make the playoffs we drop our mew goes down and uh we can now go freely into our dawn fan here so he's already revealed one of his moves being the um what is it called the knockoff he's probably gonna have flare blitz or fire punch or something like that he's gonna have a uh, high jump kick or low kick and they might have Substitute or something. But I'm going for my Dawn Fan here. I can click Earthquake. It's a free KO on something. He's going to switch out, meaning that he uh, he's going to probably lose something next turn. But he goes into his Pachirisu, which will die to rocks. So we all we need is one more KO. That's it. One more KO, and we clinch the playoffs. Um, he's got, I go for the Earthquake there. Obviously, it's not going to affect because nothing hits. And um, we get our health back from Leftovers, and we're now back to Sturdy Range, which is incredible. As he goes into a 10, his Copper And I'm thinking this is the perfect time to go hard into my Dialga. The only way he can break my sub is if he's got like HP fighting, which I don't think he will have. I think he's going to be uh, Shadow Ball or Hex. He's probably going to be Will-O-Wisp. He's going to be Paint Split, and he's probably going to be like Toxic or something. So, uh, or Will-O-Wisp. Yeah. But anyways, um, I got off the pressure. He's going to go for the Toxic Spikes, which I did not expect from the Cough Grigus, but uh, it came either way. I don't have a Grounded Poison type, so I'm not surprised that he brought it. And I'm going to be able to get off a, a free substitute. So I go for the sub here, as he's going to go hard into his... Uh, oh, he has a Jirachi still as well. I forgot that. Um... Yeah, my bad. So he had four months before, but 
yeah, he has three now. He's got the Cover Grace, the Jirachi, and the Blaziken. Completely forgot about the Jirachi. But the sub comes out, and I can go for the Earth Power. A Moonblast will not break my sub. Uh, I believe the most it does is like 18% to me. So a sub will not go down. And we outspeed, thankfully. We can go for the Earth Power. And this will destroy his uh, his career, basically. Like he's, go he's down below 50%, which is amazing. I don't know if he went for the Wish here, but he goes for the Moonblast instead. The Wish wouldn't have really saved him because we did over half. And uh, yeah, thankfully our sub is not broken as well. And we are still out of range for a uh, Adamant Mega Blaziken's low kick. So very, very important there. I'm going to go for a Earth Power again, and this should be able to pick up the KO after revealing that he is, in fact, Leftovers. Um, so down will go the Jirachi, and Dialga putting in work again. Sub Dialga has been the MVP of uh, the games that it's been coming to. I think we brought Sub Dialga a few times now, and it's always done really well. But in comes the Kofagrigus. I have the Flash Can here. That's my play, going for the Flash Can, as he's going to be able to break my sub. And uh, at this point, he messaged me on Discord saying, GG, he doesn't really have the Pokemon field to pick up a, a 2-0 win or more because, I mean, he just took over 50% from the Flash Cannon there. Um, so that's that's pretty big here. He's going to have the Shadow Ball. He's going to be able to break my sub. I'm thinking, like, you know what? Game's already over. He said it's over. I'm just going to go for the Flash Cannon again. My play here was the sub. Um, I, I should click Substitute, and it's it's it might bite me in the ass, which really sucks because he switches out and goes into the Blaziken. I, I should have substituted because I go for the Flash Cannon, and that basically makes it so that the door for him to win is open. He needs to crit um, some some attacks to be able to win, like he needs to screw my Dawn fan, but it's still it's still doable, which is scary to think about. So um, I, I, I wish I had my sub up. Um, he was probably jump kick, and he's going to pop our berry, and hopefully we can live this hit. Uh, if he's jolly, we might, but uh, unfortunately for us, you're going to see we go down, and uh, it actually is a crit. I don't know if he was adamant or jolly, I can't remember. He did send me his team, though, so hopefully uh, hopefully that crit didn't matter too much, but it, it does cost us a point differential, which can be very, very important based on tiebreaker situations if we do end up winning the game. But in comes my Dawn Van. We currently have three mods left. He has two. I can go for an Earthquake here. We are always going to live the um, the Blaziken's High Jump Kick here, which is nice. Uh, but we could go down to Toxic Poisoning as well. And uh, you never know what's going to happen with the Cuff I just I just want to get this game done. And thankfully, we don't get crit. Earthquake comes out, and Earthquake will be able to pick up the KO on this Blaziken, which is huge. So um, we clinch playoffs, which is amazing. He has one mod left. No matter, the best he can do is win 1-0, which would clinch us playoffs at 5-5. Five and five. But I'm hoping that we can pick up the win now. Um, the Coffer Gigas should not be shot outspeeding my Dawn fan, and uh, it should go down to an Earthquake. So I'm going to say this right now. We win this game 3-0. Uh, we do clinch playoffs. We are 6 wins, 4 losses with a plus 7 differential, which is huge. Plus 7? No, plus 5 differential. That's what it is. And um, there is another person in the league who is 6 wins, 4 losses with a plus 5 differential. And uh, we so we tie with them. And we have to have a tiebreaker to determine what the seeding was. Before I get to that, GG to Sparks. It was a really cool game. Uh, thankfully, I did not get flinched that turn one. It would have definitely changed how the game was uh, was going on. I really didn't want to have to deal with that. So, uh, yeah. But anyways, um, the way this tiebreaker situation works was... I'll kind of go over some of the standings. We have Gypsy who's first. There's CJ second. Panther third. Um, Aaron was fourth at the time of this game. We had... Um, I think it was, it was, it was me and... Um, who was it? I think it was... Was it... Was it, who was it? Was it JB? I can't remember. Um, I'm trying to think. Who was it that we actually played uh, in the in the battle? I, I really can't remember. I'm trying to find it out. Um, I'm like looking back. Yeah, JB. So JB and I were the ones who were tied in terms of differential and in terms of record. And um, we were sitting at like a tie for fifth. And then it was Blue and um, and uh, Kelly under the radar. They were they were like below us. Blue hadn't played his game yet. He played against Aaron. And basically, there was almost guaranteed they played each other. Um, I think Aaron needs to lose 6-0 to, um, to face off against Blue, and I'm not going to spoil what happened in that game. Um, but yeah, so, and we basically were guaranteed to finish between 6th or 7th because, uh, because what is it called, um, we finished above the Maryland Shore Terrapins, so we were guaranteed 6th or 7th no matter what, and very, very important because we did a random battle. We did a best 2 out of 3 random battle to see who wins and to see who faces who. And we actually won the best 2 out of 3 random battles, so that's amazing. Meaning we finished with the 6th best record overall in the league. And we get the chance to face off against um, against Panther. Now, Panther, we played him. We lost to him. Just like we lost to Gypsy, we lost to uh, Aaron, and we lost to CJ. Our only losses are against the top 4 teams in the league in terms of record. But I'm happy. I didn't have to play against Aaron, which is the worst matchup for me, just because of just team composition. Um, I, I really don't know how I, how I would change my team more to kind of go around that. I felt like I had a really strong team that game, and I just didn't account for, well, 
I should have brought Defog that time. Let's just put it that way. But um, I'm just happy I don't have to play Aaron. But we are going to be playing Panther instead. His team has changed a lot since he took over. So that gives me a, a chance, I guess, to change my team and see how we do. Maybe we can advance this season, not losing the first round. But we did make playoffs. Our streak continues. And uh, thankfully, oh my god, thankfully it's not Aaron. Um, I'm kind of happy it's not Gypsy as well. But but I would like to play Gypsy again. I'd like to get another shot at him. But yeah, so hopefully we can advance the playoffs. Hopefully we can go all the way and pick up a championship. And uh, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like on the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Join the Discord server linked down below. And check me out on Twitter as well. I'm trying to get some new... Uh, new graphics done and uh, trying to make the channel a bit more professional and uh, it's going to be starting on Twitter. That's where a lot of this stuff's going to be um, being shown first. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next time.